In this Calculus 3 tutorial, we will see how to find all the second partial derivatives. So let's have a look. Our function is f of x, y is equal to x to the fourth power times y minus 2x cubed times y squared. So let's go ahead and get f x first. That means we are going to treat x as the variable and y will just be a constant. So for this right here, I will just differentiate x to the fourth power and we get 4x to the third power and then y stays. Right? And then right here, I differentiate that part. Power rule, so we get minus 6x squared, and the constant multiple y squared stays. So that's that. And then let's also get fy, so partial res with respect to y. So now, I will be differentiating y to the first power, and that will give me 1. And then we just need to multiply by the constant x to the fourth power, because we're in the y world. And then next, differentiate this. Put the 2 to the front, minus 1, so we have minus 4. You keep the x to the third power, and then y to the first power. Huh? Just like that. Now we have the first derivatives. Next, we'll just have to get the second derivative by looking at this. Differentiate this with respect to y, and also with respect to x. So let's go ahead and differentiate this with respect to y next. So the notation I will use is fx, and then y. So now... We will look at this and differentiate this with respect to y. So the derivative of this is just 1, so this right here stays. And then the derivative of this, put the 2 to the front. And then this right here stays. And then y to the first power. Okay, then we look at this and then differentiate it with respect to x. So we will get 4x cubed. And then put the 3 to the front, minus 1, so minus 12x squared y. Notice fxy and fyx, they are the same. Yeah, by clear of theorem, the mixed partial will be the same. So that's pretty much it. Now we have to do fxx and fyy. So fxx, we look at this equation and differentiate that with respect to x. So put this to the front, minus 1, 12x squared, the y stays. Do this, minus 12x to the first y squared. Now, y, y. So, the derivative of this will be 0 because x is the constant in the y world. Now for this, we just get 1. So we have minus 4x to the third power. And there you have it. These right here are all the second partial derivatives. Let's do another example. Now for the next one, we have ln of ax plus by, and here, x and y are the variables, a and b are just constants. Let's go ahead and do the partial with respect to x first. Take the ln, we will get 1 over ax plus by, and then multiply by the derivative inside with respect to x. That will just give us a. This is a constant in the x world, so we get 0. Now, if we take the derivative with respect to y, we get pretty much the same thing. So the bottom is also this. And the top will be b. Okay, then for the second derivative, that's to fxy. And to do this, we don't need to use the quotient rule because a is just a constant. Let's go ahead and write this as a times ax plus by to the negative 1 power. So that way we can just put the power to the front and then minus 1 to the power. So we will get negative a times ax plus by raised to the negative 2. And again, we have to look at this and then take the derivative of that with respect to y. Then in that case, we multiply by b. Okay. Now, if we do the same thing right here, here we will have b times ax plus by raised to the negative 1. For fyx, we look at this and differentiate that with respect to x. Put the power to the front, so we get negative b times ax plus by raised to the negative 2. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to x, that will give us a. So notice, 
they are really the same thing because both of them you can put the b to the front you get negative a b a x plus b y raised to a negative two and then this right here it's also the same thing and of course if you would like you can put this down to the denominator and then make it a positive exponent but no big deal for that now let's do f x x so we are looking at this and differentiate this with respect to x put the power to the front so we get negative a times minus 1 to the power so we'll have this and then multiply by the derivative inside with respect to x so we multiply by a here and for this one you can see we get negative a squared and then ax plus by raised to the negative 2 now for this right here we will do f of fx fyy sorry fyy so look at this differentiate this with respect to y put the power to the front minus 1 to the power and then multiply by the derivative inside with respect to y so we multiply by b so you can see the answer is negative b squared times ax plus by raised to the negative 2. So this is the first partial fxy and that's the same as fyx and then this is fxx and then this is fyy just like that. Now for the third one we have z equals y over 2x plus 3y and let's just focus on doing the partial with respect to x first and then we will do zxy and also zxx so let's go ahead and do z with respect to x first well x is only right here right so it will be easier if we look at this function as y times 2x plus 3y raised to a negative 1 power because in the x world y is just a constant so we can just do the power rule we will get negative y times this thing raised to negative 1 minus 1 so 2x plus 3y raised to a negative 2 and then use the chain rule multiply by the derivative inside with respect to x so we need a 2 okay so that's pretty good and I want to take advantage of this and do the derivative with respect to x again so that will be z x x so we will have well again x is only right here so put the power to the front negative 2 times 2 times negative so all together we get 4 and then the y this right here stays power minus 1 so negative 3 and then do the chain rule again so we need to multiply by one more 2 and then let's just put everything nicely 2 times that I will write it as 8y over that 2x plus 3y raised to the third power so that is zxx now to get the partial with respect to y from here I think it will be easier if you look at this as a fraction so this right here equals negative 2y over this thing to the second power because y is here and here and of course you can use the product rule and then the power rule and also the chain rule it's kind of your preference in my opinion it's just easier to use the quotient rule right so I'm going to square the denominator right away it has a square already but the quotient rule says we have to square it again now put the bottom function here times the derivative of the top which is going to give us negative 2 and then minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom with respect to y so put the 2 to the front minus 1 to the power and then multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to y so we need to multiply by 3 right here so that's pretty much it now notice we can factor out one of the common factors right here which is 
2x plus 3y to the first power. And then here we will have negative 2. And then remember we have one more factor. And then the rest here is negative negative. So that's going to be a plus. 2 times 2 times 3 is 12. And then we have the y. And then all over, multiply the powers. So 2x plus 3y raised to the fourth power. And now you can see that this and one of them cancel, and that becomes the third power. And then for the inside, you can just work this out real quick. That's negative 4x minus 6y, and then plus 12y. So all in all, that will give us negative 4x plus 6y over that. Yeah, just like that. This is the answer for z, x, y, and hopefully we end up with the same answer for z, y, x later on too. So let's see it. So I need z, y first. And I will just go with the quotient rule from here. Let's go ahead and square the denominator. So we have 2x plus 3y squared. The bottom function here, 2x plus 3y, times the derivative of the top with respect to y, so that will be 1. And then keep the top function, and minus the top function, times the derivative of the bottom. In that case, that will give us 3. And then clean this up a little bit. 3y minus 3y is just 0, so we have 2x on the top, over that on the bottom, which is 2x plus 3y squared. Next, let's do z, y, and then take the derivative with respect to, let's do y first. Because notice we don't have y in here, right? So it would be easier if you move this up and make that a negative exponent. So we can just use the power rule. So we will get negative two times that. That will give us negative four x. And then minus one to the power. And then do the chain rule with respect to y. So multiply by this 3. And that's pretty much it. And let's clean this up though. This is going to be negative 12x on the top over that 2x plus 3y raised to the third power. So that is zyy. Now let's verify zyx. And hopefully we have the same answer as zxy. So, because we are going to differentiate this with respect to x, and we have x here and here, let's look at this form and use the quotient rule. I'm going to square the denominator, so that's 2x plus 3y squared, and then squared. The bottom function here, so 2x plus 3y squared, times the derivative of the top with respect to x, so that will be 2 minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom with respect to x. Put the power to the front, minus 1 to the power, and then multiply by the derivative inside with respect to x, which we need another 2 here. Okay, just like earlier, notice this and one of these can be factored out. So 2x plus 3y. And that will give us 2 right here, times one more. And then that's a minus 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, x. And that's out already. And then all over this thing to the fourth power. And now you see this and one of them cancel. So it looks pretty convincing, right, like what we had earlier. Finally, just multiply this out. This is 4x plus 6y. Now you can see we have 4x minus 8x. That's negative 4x. And then plus 6y. Aha. Same answer like earlier, right? Yes, of course. Lastly, 2x plus 3y raised to the third power. And we are done.